Okay, good morning. So, we continue with our uh, reading of the Joyler Club by Amy Tan. And in today's lecture, the keywords, as you know, some of it we have already seen earlier. So, Chinese American identities and the duality, okay, the split between the identities. Of course, generational gap that you were talking about in our earlier class and mother daughter relationships, especially in American context. Okay. Heterogeneity, this is another an extension of identity. Hmm, we were talking about hybridity, multiplicity, heterogeneity. So, all these constructs, okay, they get subsumed under the broader concept of identity. Then, the Joyla Club as a postmodernist text, which is very extremely important, uh, play, uh, a novel which appeared in um, the last, uh, I mean, during the last two uh, decades. So, of course, it is. It belongs to this category, and then uh, meta narrative. The idea of meta narrative, the uh, uh, the technique of meta narrative, as present in the Joyla Club. So, when in in the last class we were talking about how um, the narrative is interwoven with several stories. Okay, every section. There are four sections in the Joyla Club, and every section. Each section begins with an epigraph. Okay, each section has a, uh, a story, okay, uh, four stories told by the daughters and the mothers. So, uh, what is a meta narrative? So, it is a part of, it is a, contra, it's a, it's a construct of uh, postmodernism, it is a trope of postmodernism. So, as uh, Lyotard says in his uh, Jean Francois Lyotard in Postmodern Condition, a text which appeared in 1979. So, um, he says that a key concept uh, uh, is meta narrative in postmodern condition okay so what is a meta narrative it's an overarching mythic narratives which individuals and societies tell in order to situate their particular time and place within the context of a larger story so it's an overarching mythic narrative which individuals and societies tell in order to situate their particular time and place within the context of a larger story. The idea is to give the, their stories a deeper significance. So, therefore, the importance of the epigraph that precedes each section. And as we were talking, they, were, they are extremely universal in nature. They are not um, particularly related to any any specific um, and of course there are chinese uh, all the myth, uh, mythology and all the legends of china are captured in those epigraphs but still okay they are universal in nature for example in 26 malignant gates we were just talking about mother asked the daughter don't go outside the gate okay and then the da daughter meets with an accident as soon as she steps out uh, i am reading you this epigraph from american translation Okay, where the do, uh, mother uh, says, and she, the mother tells her daughter, you cannot put mirrors at the foot of the bed, all your marriage happiness will bounce back and turn the opposite way. So, it, this is mythology, right? Yeah, a modern mind would not accept such things. You cannot put a mirror in front of your marital bed, otherwise all, you know, all your conjugal blessings will bounce back at you, okay? you would not find peace. Okay. So, um, well that is the only place it fits, Sa said the daughter, irritated that her mother saw bad omens in everything. She had heard these warnings all her life. So, uh, daughter says that you know this is my mother, okay? she sees bad omens in her, she reads bad omens in everything. So, I have had such warnings all my life. The mother frowned. Uh, um, lucky, I can fix it for you. And she pulled out the gilt edged mirror she had brought, uh, she had bought at the Prince Club last week. It was her housewarming present. She leaned it against the headboard on top of the two pillows. You hang it here. The mirror sees that mirror. Multiply your peach blossom luck. Okay. So, mirror will look at a mirror. So, put a mirror in order to counter that particular mirror, put another mirror in front of it. So, mirror and mirror between two mirrors. 
Okay. So, now this is extremely, I mean I am sure that uh, Amy, Tard, uh, Amy Tan was thinking of something like this, you know a meta narrative and the entire uh, idea of uh, uh, mirroring, okay, which is so important in postmodernist um, uh, literature. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, I will also t introduce you to this uh, construct or this idea of meso beam. Mise or beam, M, mise or beam. Okay, so this involves the paradoxical reproduction within the fictional world of the fictional world. Yeah, reproduction of fictional world within fiction. So fiction within fiction, which mirrors. So you see how cleverly she interweaves this mirror legend. Okay, mirror within mirror. Okay, so she puts two mirrors. Okay, they will the reflection will be one mirror will reflect what the other mirror is showing. Okay, so this is what she is talking about. Amy Tan is talking about means or beam. Okay, and uh, I mean this is like you know it's a visual experience of uh, um, standing between two mirrors, seeing an infinite reproduction of one's image. It's believed to bring luck. And this technique is called Misa beam. So, through that legend, so you look at the way she uh, 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 somehow uh, connects a, a Chinese mythology, a Chinese legend okay, that you should never have only one mirror at the foot of your bed with a postmodernist idea. Okay, so, mirror within mirror. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, We will now look at two kinds. Okay, I think you have the text with you. So, just go to two kinds, page 132. And this is the story of Jing Mei Wu. Okay, as I was telling you, there are four daughters, four mothers, and two kinds is the story of. Jing Mei Wu. It begins like, my mother believed you could be anything you wanted to be in America. Now, what are we talking about? The great American dream. Hmm? You could be anything in America. You could open a restaurant. You could work for the government and get good retirement. You could buy a house with almost no money down. You could become rich. You could become instantly famous. Of course, you can be prodigy too. You can be best uh, anything. What does auntie Lindo know? Her daughter, she is only best tricky. The reference is to Waverly Zhang, who is extremely good. She is a child prodigy. We were talking about uh, a national chess champion. Okay. So, now there is also a competition between the mothers. Okay. So, they are not as harmless innocent beings. Okay. They are extremely competitive, critical and uh, they love to boast about their daughters. So, Waverly's mother boasts about um, her, uh, her daughter's chess skills. Okay. And um, Jin Mei Wu's mother wants her to become or come on par with Waverly. So, there is a competition between mothers. So, if my, her daughter is doing so well, why can't my daughter do as well? After all, we are in America. Here, we, here there are no hierarchies. Here you can be anything you want. So, living the American dream through her daughter. And then also look at the language. See, language we were talking about is a big barrier. It is a big source of barrier between uh, mothers and daughters, between two generations. You can be best anything. What does aunt, uh, auntie Lindo know? Her daughter, she is only best tricky. Okay, so, not very good English, okay, but she is just able to, just about able to communicate with her daughter. Okay, the daughter has always looked down upon her mother's English. Okay, she is ashamed in several ways. America was where all my mother's hopes lay. She had come here in 1949 after losing everything in China. Her mother and father, her family home, her first husband and two daughters, twin baby girls. But she never looked back with regret. There were so many ways for things to get better. So, see this is another trope of Asian American literature, always hoping for the best because the worst is behind us. Okay. So, America is the place where things will get better. 
America is a land, land of infinite hope and promise. So, all this is reflected here. So, uh, now uh, uh, Frederick Jameson says, you know some of you are familiar with uh, uh, the theories of uh, this uh, postmodernist theorist uh, Frederick Jameson, who says that postmodern artists cannot invent new perspectives and new modes of expressions. Instead, they operate as bricolayers. Are you familiar with this term? Bricolayers. Okay. Recycling previous works and styles. Okay. Linda Hutchin, uh, another postmodern theorist, she also talks about collage, she talks about past dish, okay, bringing, back, bringing together several disparate an, uh, elements in order to form a completely new work. Okay. And this is what we are going to see here. Now, she wants to give a new identity, she, may, she wants to make her daughter into something which she is not. Right? So, now we look at this concept of bricolaire, okay, a past dish. Okay, bringing several parts together and giving a new identity to her American daughter. So, we did not immediately pick the right kind of prodigy. See, prodigy, this is very ironical, do not you think so? This we did not, you know, mother and daughter, they did not immediately pick on some kind of prodigy. Prodigy, this is, there is an inherent contradiction in this sentence. How can you pick and choose to become a prodigy? Either you are one or you are not. Okay, you are born with a talent, maybe you can spell the way you know, you have all these American children who can spell long <laughs> words and all, then they have um, uh, competitions okay, uh, on sp spelling competitions and all, yeah. So, they are born with that, okay, they are trained and their skills are honed, okay, but you are, uh, uh, if uh, in order to become a prodigy, you have to be born with talent, but here we decided what kind of prodigy should I be, because Waverly, we have to compete with Waverly, who was a natural born chess player. So, at first my ma mother thought I could be a Chinese Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple is, was, is a celebrated child actor. Okay. She used to uh, star in all those major films, with the, she, uh, and she was a crowd puller. People would go to watch only Shirley Temple, because they and she would be like, you know, she had curly wavy hair, um, almost like novels, okay. and she would have a smile like that, and she could sing and she could dance. Okay. So, she, she was known as a prodigy. So, the mother says, okay, let us turn our child into a Shirley Temple, a TV star, a movie child star, okay. and then they give her that kind of hairstyle, okay, but it did not suit her. Okay. And then what happens uh, on page 133? You look like Negro Chinese. You do not even look American, you do not know, you are not, you're not Shirley Temple by a long shot, you just look something else. Now, the instructor of the beauty training school had to uh, lop off those, these uh, soggy clumps to make my hair even uh, again. Peter Pan is very popular these days. So, now from Ch Shirley Temple, now you are given a Peter Pan kind of a haircut. You know what is, who is Peter Pan? That boy who would never grow up and he had that straight blunt cut kind of you know haircut. So, from Shirley Temple who has a curly mop, beautiful mop on her head, now you are uh, Peter Pan, but is still you know a famous kid. Yeah. So, those were the um, ambitions. Okay. In fact, in the beginning I was just as excited as my mother, maybe even more so. I pictured this prodigy part of me as many different images trying each one um, each one on for size. I was a dainty ballerina girl standing by the curtains, waiting to hear the right music that would send me floating on my tiptoes. I was like the Christ child lifted out of the straw manger, crying with holy uh, indignity. I was Cinderella stepping from my pumpkin carriage with a sparkly cartoon music filling the air. In all of my imaginings, I was filled with a sense that I would soon become perfect. So, you get it? Bricolor, okay. she is all these things, she wanted to be all this, because the desire to be famous and successful was so intense. Okay. And the idea that anyone can be famous and successful in America, you know, you, everyone has equal opportunity, so why not? Any comments that you would like to make here? 
Okay, and then okay, immediately after that, every night after dinner, my mother and I would sit at Formica kitchen table. She would present new tests, taking her examples from stories of amazing children she had read in Ripley's Believe It or Not or Good Housekeeping, Reader's Digest, and a dozen other magazines. Okay, so what are these magazines? I mean, Reader's Digest, Good Housekeeping, Believe It or Not, Ripley's. What kind of uh, magazines are these? Ma uh, magazines which uh, mostly housewives read and also uh, they have an ideology right these all these magazines they have an ideology they are not radical readings what are they the conform yeah, yeah actually jameson gives these as examples for kitsch kitsch yes okay so very kitschy reading okay uh, kitsch is like a stereotypical reinforcing the uh, stereotypical image of good life okay what is a good so if you read i mean uh, my parents uh, are very fond of um, collecting the old issues of readers digest so in my family we have never ever thrown away any issue of readers digest so uh, the other day i was going through and i showed my son okay readers digest from 1972 70 and you know down the uh, years you have the same kind of article good housekeeping my mother was very fond of reading good housekeeping also this is the way a house should be kept okay so it should be spick and span everything should be neat and orderly in its place so they all these magazines uh, strive to create a certain kind of image of an of an idealized utopian image okay what an ideal woman should be an ideal family should be okay so all readers digest they give you, you know how to save your marriage for example <laughs> yeah so marriages have to be maintained the you know the sanctity of family these things have to be maintained how to become a role model for your children you know we still have those kinds of articles and they were still there in 1960s also okay so that's what so this i mean uh, here amy tan is actually uh, uh, in other words, she is like you know, it is a very iron, ironic kind of a statement to read these magazines and then aspire to become, keep these models, uh, keep these magazines as kind of role models and aspire to become what these uh, magazines you know uh, tell us to do, okay, which is unrealistic. Page 134. The first night she bought out, brought out a story about a three year old boy who knew the capitals of all the states and even most of the European countries. Okay. So, my mother asked me looking at the magazine story, what is the capital of Finland? All I knew was the capital of California because Sacramento was the name of the street we lived on in a Chinatown, Nairobi I guessed saying the most foreign word I could think of. She checked to see if that was possible one way to pronounce Helsinki before showing me the answer. Okay. So, capital of Finland is uh, and the child does not know, but what, what is being implied here that she is being forced to turn into something that she is not. Okay. She is not an exam, she is like most of us, you know, uh, 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 a, a good kid who is willing to work hard, that is it. Okay. But she is not a prodigy, she is not born with some kind of an exceptional talent which is what her mother wants her to be. So, this again gives birth or gives rise to that we were talking about the conflict in mother daughter relationships and Waverly Zhang's story four directions also we saw how Waverly's talents are curbed okay, or she could not become she could not reach great heights because of her mother's constant um, you know, fawning and, uh, and trying to take credit for her success. Okay, although in a way you know she does not mean bad she does not mean anything wrong, but uh, mothers being what they are and daughters they always fail to understand their mothers. Okay. So, here too the mother is doing her best to uh, make her daughter successful, but it is not possible. Skip down, um, oh, I will mean, just scroll, come down a bit. The tests got harder multiplying numbers in my head, finding the queen of hearts in a deck of cards trying to stand on my head without using my hands, 
predicting the daily temperatures in Los Angeles, New York and London. So, all these <laughs> exercises were given to her, so that she could appear on TV and become a star. Okay. And that is what happens usually, you know, you have child stars who can, who, uh, who can you know, rattle off capitals of all the countries, major countries of the world spellings and all and this is one way to get fa famous. And after seeing my mother's disappointed face once again, something inside of me began to die. I hated the tests, she raised hopes and uh, the raised hopes and failed expectations. Before going to bed that night, I looked in the mirror above the bathroom sink and when I saw only my face staring back and that it would always be this ordinary face, I began to cry. Such a sad, ugly girl. Okay. So, all these raised expectations, what did they do? She could not achieve anything, but it instilled in her a lack of self-esteem. Whatever respect she had for herself, even that uh, got eroded. Uh, page 135, 135, two or three months had gone by without any mention of my being a prodigy again and then one day my mother was watching the Ed Sullivan show on TV. Okay, what is, what was the Ed Sullivan show? Ed Sullivan is also one, you know, like Oprah, he was like uh, Oprah Winfrey, a major TV host, a talk show person, okay. Who would bring? guests and exceptionally talented people and introduce them to the world. Okay. And on Ed Sullivan show, she saw a Chinese boy beautifully playing a piano, playing the piano. So, the mother said, now we have got it. Okay. You are going to be uh, a pianist. Okay. Now, the family is poor, you know, they do not have that kind of money, but somehow they skim through and buy, a, uh, get a piano for themselves. And the mother who is a cleaning, who works as a cleaning lady in uh, uh, American houses, she uh, in exchange for uh, you know so her services, she asks a tutor to come and train her daughter in playing the piano. Okay. So, the examine you have, uh, we have to see the both, you know the, uh, the two sides, okay. the lens to which a mother would go to make her uh, child successful. Okay. In her child size, what her mother is doing is just uh, uh, raising expectations and then uh, uh, since she is unable to fulfill those expectations, her self esteem gets eroded and she blames her mother for this, that you have turned me into a mess. Okay. But they do not notice the hard work, the sacrifices parents go through to uh, you know, help them achieve these things. Um, page 136, page 136. is the piano episode. Why do not you like me the way I am? She asked her mother. I am not a genius. I cannot play the piano and even if, if I could, I would not go on TV if you paid me a million dollars. My mother slapped me. Who asked you be genius? Only ask you be your best for you sake. You think I want you be genius? What for? Who asked you? So ungrateful. I heard her mutter in Chinese. If she had as much talent as she has temper, she would be famous now. <laughs> okay. A typical mother's outburst. Okay. She is all, you know, she does not even appreciate what I am doing for her. No talent and not even discipline enough. Okay. If, if only she would discipline herself, she would become famous now, but she does not want to. Okay. So, now see, um, we have been looking at this, uh, uh, this kind of, you know, narrative technique throughout telling stories. So, all mothers, all daughters have a story to tell and as framed by the epigraph. So, all these so storytelling becomes a major theme in the Joy Luck Club and perhaps it is a very, it is a major theme in most Asian American writings also, storytelling. Okay. Stories within stories. Perhaps some of you are familiar with uh, the Kite Runner by Khalid Hosseini. Okay, if you have read, I am not watch, talking about the movie, the movie does not come anywhere near the novel. Have you read the novel? Have you? Good. Okay, how many stories are there within the story, within the novel? Hassan's, uh, Hassan's story, Hassan, he goes back to his childhood. Yeah, and also um, Amir, Amir and Hassan. 
so amir from the beginning he is a storyteller yeah he likes to construct stories okay so he likes to read stories from 1001 arabian nights and all so stories within stories but uh, and he also tells his stories from the quran if you remember sacrificial lamb and then you have hasan's story who is used as a sacrificial uh, uh, you know uh, uh, kind of you know the symbol for this family okay so story within story structure and what does it do it gives a deeper significance to the local to the main story yeah okay so one theme which a recurring theme in asian american writing is one is translating okay language it becomes a ma very major theme american dream as we have been talking about that's a extremely important theme in most asian american writings and then uh, storytelling of course you don't have the oh you have the novel okay so page 24 look at page 24 Oh, what good stories! You got it. Second, third paragraph. Hmm? Oh, what good stories! Stories spilling out all over the place. We almost laughed to death. A rooster that ran into the house, screeching on top of dinner bowls, the same bowls that held him quietly in pieces the next day. And one about a girl who wrote love sto love letters for two friends who loved the same man. and a silly foreign lady who fainted on a toilet when fire crackers went off next to her hmm? people thought we were wrong to serve banquets every week while many people in the city were starving this is uh, the mother story okay um, as mother as remembered by jingmi wu so this is the first story the when she uh, introduces us to the idea of the joy luck club joy luck club is nothing how what is the meaning of this title okay the these four mothers who are all immigrants first generational american chinese american ladies okay they have very few materialistic possession material possessions okay they have very few belongings okay they have all lost whatever they had they have lost their families some of them have lost their husbands and children uh, during the war and they you know out of desperation they have come and um, in hope of making it big or making it successful in america okay so when they have not when they had nothing they formed a small club a group called the joy luck club okay so look at the you know club is of course getting together of some people okay with the same purpose and what is the purpose to bring joy and to bring luck okay so that that's the meaning of the sanya yeah, that's the way. so it's a, it's a very uh, beautiful title to give a novel the joy luck club okay because these four women who had so Uh, who have uh, gone through so much of suffering both personal and all kinds you know they have seen the war they have seen calamities terrible tragedies deaths you know uh, ruins and all lost everything so, but still they have hopes and america symbolizes hope okay so they've come and come together and form a club called the joy luck club where every week they come together and they cook all uh, you, you see cooking is another major motive uh, in most asian american writing so uh, and um, these women pride themselves uh, on the culinary skills so the idea is that every week they will meet they will tell each other stories they will cook and they will bring special dishes okay cooked with great love and affection for uh, each other and then they will discuss cooking recipes what does it do and they also play yeah this is also important they play a game of poker yeah what what does it all do playing games telling stories cooking what does it do a sense of community yeah inculcates a sense of community and also distracts them from their everyday miseries okay so therefore the joy luck club so at the beginning they say you know the, the uh, as jingmi wu remembers her dead mother Jing Mei Wu is an, uh, also the protagonist of two kinds: the child who is who is being forced to become a great pianist, but who couldn't. Now she is reminiscing um, uh, on her, uh, you know, um, mother's life, and she says that this is what my mother told me. Oh, we used to tell each other stories. We used to cook. People thought we were wrong to serve 
banquets every week where, while many people in the city were starving, eating rats and late, later, they are talking about China. Okay? There are many people in the city were starving, eating rats and later the garbage that the poorest rats used to feed on. But we still had hope. Okay? And on page 25, it is given clearly that hope was our only joy and that is how we came to call our little parties joy luck. Okay. So, very important feature coming together, telling stories and um, uh, cooking together, feeding each other okay. and that somehow gave them the strength to meet the, uh, you know, the demands of everyday life. So, the life they left behind and when they came to America also the courage to go on in a new land. Okay. So, um, uh, 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 Jing Mei Wu tells us that uh, whenever my mother would talk about uh, her native land in China, which is called, the place is called Quilin, Quilin. So, she says whenever she would tell me the stories, um, the story would get better and better. Okay, so, it was not always the same story, she would begin the same way, you know, this is the story, but then uh, uh, it would change with every retelling and telling the story would change and it, the end would become happier and happier. So, the story became happier. So, it also talks about, what does it tell you about? The healing power of storytelling, you know, it is there in, you know, the healing power of uh, um, especially oral storytelling, yeah, oral, yeah, tradition. And if you look carefully, this is a common motive that runs through most Asian American writings. So, it, it almost appears to his, uh, the daughter that in retelling happy stories, in a way the mother um, who is no longer there, so her name is Su Hyun, she is repeatedly choosing her own happiness, because if you are happy, if you think happy, perhaps it influences, okay, it brings you luck. If you think tragic, if you think only bad things, okay, this is this is what you are going to end up as. But here, they choose to tell happy stories so that it may bring some, you know, it may affect their own stories, their own lives. Okay, we'll uh, move on to page one thirty-eight now. Page 138, two kinds continued. So, now uh, she is being trained to become an expert pianist. Over the next year, I practiced like this dutifully in my own way and then one day I heard my mother and her friend Lindo Zhang both talking in a loud bragging tone of voice. It was after church and I was leaning against the brick wall, wearing a dress with stiff white petticoats. Auntie Lindo's daughter, Waverly, who was about my age, um, was standing farther down the wall, about five feet away. Um, I thought she was a snooty. Waverly Zhang had gained a certain amount of fame as Chinatown's littlest Chinese chess champion. Now, look at the alliteration also, okay. there is almost music there. So, Waverly was a snooty, she was also extremely pretty, all things, she was famous, she was a prodigy, everything that Jing Mei Wu was not. And her mother sort of, you know, although she loved her daughter very extremely deeply, obviously, but she wants her daughter to become another Waverly. Okay. And perhaps this is this sense of rivalry and competition that makes Jing Mi Wu hate Waverly so much, even as kids they hated each other. Um, she bring home too many trophy, lamented auntie Lindo that Sunday. All day she play chess, all day I have no time do nothing, but dust off her winnings. She threw a scolding look at Waverly, who pretending not to see, who pretended not to see her. You lucky you do not have this problem said auntie Lindo with a sigh to my mother. So, it is a sense of you know fake modesty, you see she makes me work so hard, I, I have to polish the trophies that she brings home. And my mother squared her shoulders and bragged, our problem worse than yours. If we ask Jing Mi wash dish, she hear nothing but music. It is like 
you can't stop this natural talent. And right then, I was determined to put a stop to her foolish pride. Okay. So, this is what you know. So, and this is something which is very common among most mothers and daughters, you know, an aunt saying something, uh, an aunt bragging about your cousin. And you say, okay, my, you know, my mother does not love me after all, okay. She, she likes the other child for me, which is not really the case, okay. Your parents have great wishes and ambitions for you and therefore, they do this competition, although they are, they do not realize that how um, hurtful they may be through, you know, these comparisons. But the fact remains that they love you deeply and therefore, they are uh, making such comparisons. <coughs> Um, we will go move on to now page 142. We are told that she appeared uh, in a concert where she performed extremely badly. She just went uh, totally um, off key and then she got very bad reviews. Nobody liked her performance and that was the end. She stopped. She did not want to continue her uh, piano practice. So, page 142. You want me to become someone that I am not. I sobbed. I will never be the kind of daughter you want me to be. Only two kinds of daughters, she shouted in Chinese, those who are obedient and those who follow their own mind. Only one kind of daughter can live in this house, obedient daughter. Okay. So, this is another trope of Chinese uh, in a culture. Children have to be obedient. Okay. You cannot have, although you are an American, uh, Jingmi Wu, definitely she is the second generation Chinese. She is born and brought up in China. She speaks, per, uh, sorry, in America. She speaks perfect English. She is imbued in American culture. So, you cannot force her to be what you want her to become. Okay. But that is the Chinese culture. And what Amy Tan is trying to tell us is that, you know, uh, uh, somehow mothers know best, whether it is a Chinese mother or an American mother or whatever. Okay. But mothers know best. However, deeply one may resent them at the moment for their cruelties, little acts of, you know, criticisms and cruelties, but they know best. Okay. It was as if I had said the magic word, uh, oh, I am sorry. Um, and I could sense her anger rising to its breaking point. I wanted to see it spill over. And that is when I remembered the babies she had lost in China the ones we never talked about. Then I wish I had never been born, I shouted. I wish I were dead like them. It was as if I had said the magic words and her face went blank, her mouth closed, her arms went slack and she backed out of the room, stunned, as if she were blowing away like a small brown leaf, thin, brittle, lifeless. Now, what do you make of this? She, she knows, her mother has already told her that she has a back story, you know, that she, her mother had the past. She was once married to a Chinese man in, back home in China, uh, in Kuelin. And uh, after the outbreak of the war, she lost her husband who died in that war. And uh, the babies, you know, uh, she could not bring them. Somehow, she could not bring the twin uh, daughters that she had. Okay, so, they were being raised by someone, but she could not trace them back. So, she lost her babies forever. And now, Jing Mi Wu can hurt her mother. She can strike her mother back in the only way she knows, by referring to those lost babies. And she said, I, I, she said that I hope, I mean your babies for all I know are dead and I hope I am dead as well. And that sort of, you know, finishes the mother off. Okay. Why? I mean, you know, uh, the idea is very clear that for a mother, nothing is more important than her children. Okay, whether it is the child who is with her right now or whether the children she has lost, whatever tragedy. But a mother will, would always love her children so much and that is the best way to attack a mother. You know, you attack her children and that is it. So, all her ambitions are not for herself, but for her child, but the child does not understand that. Okay. So, out of venom, out of uh, some sense of uh, uh, vindicating herself. She says these cruel words to her and then mother, how is she described? Like a small brown leaf, thin and brittle, which can easily be blown away and broken. Oh, 
okay and then many years pass the mother is all already dead okay and then we meet her um, a few a few years ago it's on page 143 she offered to give me the piano for my 30th birthday i had not played in all those years i saw the offer as a sign of forgiveness a tremendous burden removed no this your piano always your piano you only one can play you pick up fast i said my mother as if she knew this was certain you have natural talent you could be ingenious if you want to no i couldn't you just not trying said my mother and she was neither angry nor sad she said it as if to announce a fact that could not be disproved take it okay so this is how you know uh, the uh, this particular chapter ends although the mother has given her several things chinese silk dresses jewelry and all but this piano becomes a symbol of their life together okay this piano symbolizes something that uh, gave great hope to both mother, the mother and the daughter but out of some sense of foolish pride or uh, you know uh, a sense of you know rebellion okay most of us rebel against our parents without um, actually understanding the depth to which we could be hurting them but the, uh, now at uh, in her 30s she realizes that her mother meant so well for her you know, her mother wished her so well she her mother had some aspirations for her and therefore this kind it was not out because she wanted something for herself but she still you know connects this piano she, they never sold it off although it's an expensive piece of uh, you know um, property so uh, material possessions also acquire a life in the novel okay at one place you will find when uh, in the last class you uh, i was talking about uh, that marriage where husbands and wife they maintain separate accounts okay the mother the chinese mother comes to that household and asks that uh, um, this is unacceptable husbands and wives shouldn't live lead this kind of life where accounts are so clearly demarcated she has to pay for this and he has to pay for that okay so uh, uh, and they maintain such records so why do that and then the chapter ends the story ends with breaking down of a breaking into pieces of a flower vase okay so flower vase becomes a symbol okay so now the mother says now it it has fallen down and it cannot be repaired okay that that's not just the flower vase that is being discussed okay is death of a relationship okay mother is telling her daughter leave this man okay your relationship is beyond repair okay and that's what she does she leaves him because she said i cannot go on like this every day sitting adding subtracting calculating maintaining where is the marriage where is love in this relationship okay the husband doesn't understand and the flower vase breaks into pieces so that becomes a symbol piano becomes a symbol of something the chess board that waverly in her foolish pride has a, a you know jettison her mother preserves that and that later becomes a symbol of you know creating building the bridge between them um we were also talking about the uh, duality identities and dualities uh, in the joy luck club i want you to um, i uh, i'll read out a passage from the novel um this is the mother talking i wanted my children to have the best combination american circumstances and chinese character that's the best combination chinese character most chinese asian americans anyway you know they have this sense the japanese believe they have the best character the indians too the, so do the chinese okay the chinese character is the best character they are they are they have this sense of winning they have this sense of pride okay they have a culture that dates back thousands of years ago okay but american circumstances are also important you have to have that kind of opportunity and our kind of character so uh, the deadly combination could be the mixing of the two how could i know these things these two things do not mix okay and this is what the mothers realize okay this is what i hoped for that with our character and with american circumstances you know uh, things could only get better and better okay how was i to know that these things don't go together okay chinese character that means chinese identity cannot remain pure 
in American circumstances. Okay. That culture would not, although we would love to, you know, in an ideal world, we would love to have that sense of continuation, okay, the same sense of culture, but that is not possible. In American circumstances, you become an American, you assimilate, okay, you just, you do not continue the tradition. If you are born poor here, it is no lasting shame. In America, nobody says you have to keep the circumstances somebody else gives you. She learned these things, but I could not teach her about Chinese character. How not to show your own thoughts, to put your feelings behind your face, so you can take advantage of hidden opportunities. Why Chinese thinking is best. So, this is what the mother feels, but the daughter. <coughs> The Chinese character is that keep your feelings hidden, okay. do not show your expressions and feelings on your face, but that is American trait, right. They are very transparent, they show everything, their, uh, their hopes, their joys, their anger, their tempers, everything is extremely visible, not in China. Okay. But how do I teach these things to my daughter? Okay. She has developed an American character, okay, which is a loss. So, there is always a sense of, you know, instead of continuing, she has lost the tradition and culture. Okay. So, if you look at uh, now coming to this point, Joy Luck, the Joy Luck Club as a post modernist novel. So, what are the, one is of course, the fragmented writing style, the fragmented narrative, the non linear narrative. We were talking about it because stories. Uh, go back and forth in space and time. Some parts take place in China. Even Jing Mi Wu takes a trip to, makes a trip to China in order to trace her to, you know, those stepsisters, which her mother always, uh, um, you know, her mother used to pine for those kids, babies. So, when the mother is dead, Jing Mi Wu takes a trip to China and tries to locate the kids. So, the story travels between two places and um, two times. Okay. Also, hyperlink, sense of hyperlink, you know, you have several stories running together. So, all stories, all daughters and all mothers, they have a story to tell. Okay. So, you have this sense of, you know, several parallel stories running. So, it is difficult to keep track of you, you know, what story are you reading, unless and until it, you are very careful and attentive. Okay. So, that is true of all postmodernist literature. You have to, other, if you lose track, then uh, everything will fall flat. Okay. Then also that uh, the, the duality in identity. So, postmodernism is also about uh, schizoid, S C H I Z O I E D, you know, you, uh, uh, the split, the split between uh, unlike modernism, which is very uh, homogeneous. Okay. So, it postmodernist literature also talks about schizophrenia, the split. Okay. Then of course, fluidity of identities. Okay. The mothers would like to remain, you know, the, the China, retain the Chinese character among American circumstances, but it is not possible. Okay. So, fluidity, identities are fluid. There is no fixed or a stable sense or of identity. Then, of course, as a postmodernist text, it is highly intertextual, okay, full of pastiches and collages, okay. several stories. Uh, intermingling with other stories and also making references, allusions and all to popular culture, to music, to ancient Chinese art, culture, culinary skills and all those things. So, it becomes a collage of several, uh, um, you know, uh, disparate items. Okay. Of course, and like most postmodernist uh, works of literature, it encourages multiple readings, okay, there are multiple layers, so multi-layered texts which is one of the most important traits trait in uh, postmodernist literature. Also, for, uh, you can pay attention to its, you know, resistance to closure. Most postmodernist writings, they resist closure. You do not find a simplistic solution to these things. So, uh, the entire novel, what is it about? It deals with the idea of generation gap, identities, okay, uh, the, uh, the construct of American dream. But there are no simple solutions provided. At the end, you go back to where you started. Okay, except that perhaps what um, the novel tries to tell you, and you have the novel. Please go to page two sixty-five.
page 265 and this could perhaps be taken as the message of the joy luck club here we are looking at uh, the mother's point of view the mother is taken to um, a beauty parlor by her daughter and the beautician the hairstylist mr rory uh, so we we hear the mother talking now Miss, mr rory is brushing my hair everything is soft everything is black you look great ma says my daughter everyone at the wedding will think you are my sister i look at my face in the beauty parlor mirror i see my reflection i cannot see my faults but i know they are there i gave my daughter these faults the same eyes the same cheeks the same chin her character it came from my circumstances i look at my daughter and now it is the first time i have seen it okay so what is how does it end okay that we you know you know perhaps we are all a part of a of an ongoing tradition my daughter my american daughter okay she may be an american but she has so many of of my uh, faults okay so many of my features so there is a sense of continuation okay she will you know uh, the study she may not be upholding my cultures the cultural tradition but still in her form i will um, go on living in some way so that's the last epigraph of this novel as well the mother looks at the grandchild okay the mother that is the epigraph she looks at a grandchild and she says why are you smiling all the time and the child keeps smiling and then the um, uh, the grandmother says yeah this is the way to be yeah, i was like you once but then i lost my innocence in america but still i live with the sense that one has to go on smiling and hope for the best okay so we are all what we are, i mean where we come from okay we are just um, perhaps in you know we continue a sense of tradition of our ancestors but we are also um, individuals in our own right and that has to be accepted by both generations okay so perhaps that is the idea of the joy luck club however the author avoids a uh, satisfactory closure to the novel so with this we will end any questions remarks all right thank you then